Hello business people, you're watching Idea Channel with me, Liani Anwar. And today we have a special guest from Kone, an international engineering and service company, a global leader in elevators and escalators industry. And here is Mr. Hendrik and Ruth, CEO and the president of Kone Global. Hello, Mr. Hendrik, how are you today? Thank you. Very nice to be with you here today. Thank you for joining with us. So talking about the Kone's business in globally and also in Indonesia. Kone is an international engineering and service company it was founded in 1910 and yeah. up until now the business has been growing so fast and excellent. Can you tell us more about the Kone's journey in developing its business? You know, uh, as you mentioned, we are well over 100 years old mm -hmm. and we started off as a, a company operating primarily in the Nordic region, but it was already actually about 50 years ago we started to expand globally. And uh, if you look at our journey over the past uh, little bit over 10 years, about 10, 15 years, we have been growing very rapidly uh, around the world. Um, and our growth has really been driven by all geographies, uh, but uh, uh, clearly Asia has been the absolutely fastest growing market for us. Mm -hmm. And today we are the clear market leader. If we look at Asia Pacific, whether we look at including or excluding China, we are the clear market leader here uh, today. Uh, so that has been a significant part of our success. Okay, so talking about the main focus of the Kones business, actually to build and give a service to the main focus, uh, actually about the escalators and elevators mm. as well. What makes Kone different from all its competitors? You know, we have many strong competitors, but how we want to differentiate and how we're differentiating is we think about our business as people flow. People our flow. business uh, is about moving people safely, mm -hmm. conveniently, mm -hmm. and without waiting in and between buildings. Mm. That is what we do with the, the elevators and escalators we provide. But we think about it all from a people movement perspective. What is the experience mm. for people working, living in these buildings or shopping in these buildings? That is what, where we put our emphasis. And you can see in our approach that that differentiates us very much from our competition. Mm -hmm. Okay, so talking about the technology, what is actually the technology is being used in Kone? As we know that Kone is the first to launch um, MRL construction in the elevator. So yeah. how's the system so far? How about the technology and also in the machinery and also the system as well that can give the positive and excellent outcome for the client? So, uh, we have been and continue to be a technology leader and pioneer in mm -hmm. our industry. And that is very important to us. And we have, over the past years, continuously increased how much we invest in new technologies and new services and solutions for our customers. Perhaps what is most important is that we think about technology always uh, in a way that how can it help our customers. Mm -hmm. How does it help our customers succeed in their business? Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of great technologies today how you can really provide services and solutions that fits the individual needs of our customers. Mm -hmm. Each customer has an individual need. Mm -hmm. That is what we are about. That how can we meet them in a very efficient and good way? As you mentioned, we really revolutionized the industry already over 20 years ago mm -hmm. by bringing out machine roomless elevators and of course that has continuously developed. We have continuously brought out new innovations over the past years and if we look at today what is the big thing? It is really taking the leading products that we have. Mm -hmm. We have very strong products in elevators and escalators and combining that with digital technologies. Okay. When you combine these two that is when you can provide outcomes that suit the individual needs of our customers. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are doing. Okay, so talking about the Kone's business in global, Kone is actually uh, served in more than 65 countries in all over the world. Mm -hmm. How is the growth so far? Well, we have had good growth if we look constantly over the past roughly 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past few years, growth has been a little bit slower particularly because the very large China market mm -hmm. has uh, been declining. Mm -hmm. uh, we are the market leader there, uh, which we're very happy about. 
uh, and it's clear it's by far the world's largest market. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I look at uh, over the past uh, few years, where we have grown very rapidly, have been Southeast Asia, including Indonesia. Mm -hmm. uh, we have grown very rapidly in our services business. Okay. That is where we are growing clearly faster than our main competitors. Okay, so what is the biggest contribution of the growth so far? Well, uh, biggest contribution of growth, if you look over a 10-year period, has clearly been China. Mm -hmm. uh, over the past few years, in fact, the fastest growth has been in the United States and in some European countries mm -hmm. and in the service business. If I look at the next five years, I believe the fastest growth will be in countries in Southeast Asia, including Indonesia. Indonesia has some very important and good growth trends. Mm -hmm. I believe India has uh, very significant growth trends. And we have strong market positions in all of these countries. Uh, so here, I think we will have good growth when we look uh, over the next two years. Okay, talking about the Kone's business in Indonesia, since Kone was expanded its business yeah. into, in, into Indonesia since 1994, yeah. the business has been growing so very fast and excellent, mm -hmm. and Kone was become one of the fastest growth uh, company in elevators and escalators industry mm -hmm. in Indonesia. What did the company do so far? Well, we've grown uh, very strongly, particularly in the little bit over the past five years. Uh, you know, when I look at Indonesia, it has all the mega trends that are driving the growth in our industry. Mm -hmm. It has uh, a urbanizing population. Mm -hmm. It has uh, people who want to live more close to the city, more in apartments rather than uh, single family homes. Mm -hmm. That is a very much an increasing trend here. Of course, you have a very young population, a growing population. All of those are very strong growth drivers in our industry. But I think also what is very interesting in this market is that uh, the uh, willingness to take up new technologies is very high. Mm. It's a, uh, a country where you're happy to test the new, to understand what is the latest. And that's where we can see a lot of growth coming, that both the urbanization mm -hmm but also new services and solutions mm -hmm. that makes actually the people flow better in buildings. And I think it's very important because we know it's a very population dense country. Yeah. So it's really needed here. Those are the things that I see are really growth drivers over the coming years here. Okay, so it's so interesting to talk about the Cornest business in global and also in Indonesia as well. So we're talking about the fourth industrial revolution mm -hmm. and how Kone can adapt this industrial revolution right after the break. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Welcome back in special dialogue with Kone. So, Mr. Henrik, we are currently in fourth industrial revolution since the Internet of Things and technology are growing so very fast and the world has changing very quick. So, how Kone can adapt this fourth industrial revolution? Well, we see the fourth industrial revolution as a very big opportunity for us. Mm -hmm. you know, if I look at Kone's history over the past over 100 years, our best times have always been when there's been the most change in the markets. Mm -hmm. We again see with the fourth industrial revolution a significant change. Mm -hmm. You mentioned it, Internet of Things. That is really uh, a critical thing for us and we have invested a lot in that. And we are really showing the way in our industry with services based on Internet of Things. But what is important with these services is that how do we bring something that really helps our customers in their business, really improves their daily lives. Mm -hmm. That is what is so exciting with these technologies. Mm -hmm. And that is how we are deploying them. So I wouldn't say that we are adapting to it. We, uh, I would say that we are taking the opportunity and creating new business opportunities mm -hmm. by serving our customers better. That's mm -hmm. how we think about it. So we, we like the, the trends. Okay, so um, about the fourth industrial revolution also, um, to provide every uh, solution to the every single problem with the innovation using the technology internet of things artificial intelligence uh, so what about the innovation that Kone has been built to uh, the customer using the internet of things technology and so on and so forth 
So over the past years, we brought out several new services uh, that are based on uh, Internet of Things that are uh, deploying machine learning or artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. depends on what you want to call it. Uh, and we have really shown the way here. We have now been uh, rolling out over the past years a service we call 24-7 Connected Services. Mm -hmm. How we can uh, real-time monitor what is happening to elevators, escalators, uh, and how people are moving in buildings. Mm -hmm. And what's, why is this important? Well, we can see that as uh, urbanization continues, you have more and more people in buildings, you have more and more people in urban environments. Uh, that means that if you have breakdowns, it has a very significant impact on the users. That's why. So how can we all the time ensure that we understand before problems occur, we can also analyze how people are moving, helping our customers design buildings mm -hmm. the way that people have the best experience. And that is all what we do with how we have uh, censored, how oh, we are measuring okay. the data, how we collect in the cloud, how we are analyzing it. Uh, and this is really a core part of our business today. Mm -hmm. And we're really showing the way in our industry uh, with these services. So the system is uh, to tell, uh, and also there's an alert to the customer before it causes breakdown, right? So uh, if uh, our system detects that there is a fault occurring, mm -hmm. it, it will create a service need that if oh, it's uh, okay. something is urgent, it goes straight to a technician okay. who can then go and fix before things happen. But also uh, it will go to our customers have now fully transparent systems mm -hmm. so they can see exactly what have we done, okay. what are the needs that are created, what, what is, how are the systems operating. Mm -hmm. So they can decide if they want to see really deep in what we are doing but of course all these go into our uh, uh, networks and systems okay. to help us serve our customers in the way they want to be serviced. And again, okay. I come back to what is so interesting with uh, new digital technologies is that we can, with them, service our customers the way they want to be serviced in mm -hmm. the individual way supporting their business. Okay. That is what is important here. Uh, talking about the four industrial revolution also can cause a disruptive technology. In fact, there, there are many uh, big companies will get excluded because mm -hmm. of the rising of the startup companies yeah. in Indonesia, also in globally. So uh, no matter how big the company are, if they cannot adapt to this industrial revolution, in this era, they will get excluded. How do you maintain the market so far? We have seen this as a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know what? We actually collaborate with a lot of startups to create services. So we're actually creating oh, okay. a, a ecosystem where others can also uh, provide services uh, mm -hmm. based on the data we, uh, we are, we are uh, generating. But what is important and why we see this as an opportunity is that we have taken, if you talk about fourth industrial revolution, Internet of Things, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, robotics, machine learning, all of this. Uh, this is a core part of all of our businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, when I look at uh, industries where they've been challenging uh, situations for companies, it's very often that companies, uh, they establish a separate department, separate business that they call digital within the business. Mm -hmm. And then everything else continues as before, and then they try to inflict from this digital part into new businesses. And you know what, I don't think that that's the best way. Mm -hmm. What we have done is that within each of our business, digital is the way we work today. That okay. is within our new equipment business, within our services, within all of areas. We embed it into everything we do. And that is why we see it as such a great opportunity. We see it uh, as a way of uh, servicing our customers much better. And you know what, we have started to generate uh, service revenues that did okay. not exist in our business before based on these services. So we see a great opportunity here and that's why we are investing so much in the future here. Okay, is it already started now or? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, yes. So we are generating concrete mm -hmm. revenues mm -hmm. uh, because of the new ways we are able to serve our customers mm -hmm. to support them better in their business. Okay, so talking about the collaboration of Corne with the other uh, company, especially in the artificial intelligence or the technology system like IBM using the big data and also the IoT analytics. So how it works? So uh, what we have decided to do is that uh, uh, Corne has been uh, 
voted one of the world's hundred most innovative companies in seven out of the past eight years. Okay. So, but we can still see that even though uh, we have a lot of innovation happening, mm -hmm. we believe that when it comes to many new technologies, we need world leading partners. Mm -hmm. And that is how we innovate very much together with our partners and with our customers. So we have selected a few uh, critical partners to us. You mentioned one, which is IBM. Another one is Salesforce.com, where we use a lot of their platforms for artificial intelligence. And what we working with them is to bring the latest in IoT, artificial intelligence, and seeing how do we deploy it to our business. So they help us with the platforms, with the basic technologies, and we then deploy it in our business to the benefit to our customers. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is what we have been doing now successfully for uh, several years, mm -hmm. and we are continuing to invest in this and deepen our relationship with these companies. Okay, it's fantastic. And we're talking about uh, Karnes business in the future, yeah. right after the break. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Welcome back in special dialogue with Kone. So, Mr. Hendrik, talking about the future, how do you see the business prospect in Indonesia, especially because Indonesia is uh, targeting to be one of the biggest country with the biggest GDP in the world in 2030. I think the opportunity is very big in Indonesia. How do you see the prospect? I very much agree with you. and, and uh it all comes from what I mentioned earlier, the mega trends we're seeing here. We're seeing a, a, a large but young population. Mm -hmm. We see uh, urbanization that is continuing. We see that uh, particularly uh, younger consumers prefer to live in uh, apartment buildings closer to the city center. And uh, that means that we expect to see a lot of construction of both residential, commercial infrastructure, uh, not only in uh, Jakarta, but Surabaya and the other large cities mm. as well. So we can see those mega trends are very much driving the growth. And you know what, when we see that, and we see that people want to live close to the city center, there's not much space, you need to build higher. Yeah. It may not be a secret, but we like that. <laughs> okay, so talking about the newest project of Kone, this is fantastic. The newest biggest, uh, the newest big project of Kone for Jeddah Tower in Saudi Arabia with a height over a thousand meters. Mm. Uh, many people say that it couldn't be done uh, for the elevators with uh, more than 500 meters. So how could you do that and how could you prove that? Well, I think we can prove that because of the technologies we have mm -hmm. created over the past years. We clearly have laboratories where we test all of this and mm -hmm. we can show that it's possible. Uh, and we have many uh, important buildings that we have commissioned over the past years uh, that are very high. Uh, latest one that, are, that is about to be finished is China Zun, uh, the high, tallest tower in Beijing. Mm -hmm. But I would say that these are only a few projects. I think what is important is that uh, we serve our customers in many parts of the world, in over 65 countries, mm -hmm. with whatever needs they have. Mm -hmm. We can do standard residential buildings, which is a very significant part of our business. With the leading technologies we have, we can serve the most complex and exciting projects around the world. And that just shows the breadth and the innovation we possess within the company mm -hmm. to be able to do that. Uh, so it's based on long, consistent innovation by constantly understanding where do our customers want to go, mm -hmm. what is their uh, vision, mission, what are their dreams, and how can we support them in achieving those. Mm -hmm. That is how we think about innovation, and that's how we come up with great solutions to be able to really break new grounds. Okay, consistent and collaborate with the technology yeah. as well. So what about the more project in Indonesia? Because uh, as we know that Kone was collaborated with many big real estate companies and a big uh, properties companies in Indonesia. What would you do to elaborate more in order to make a collaboration with other bigger companies and also a bigger project in Indonesia? Well, what is important to us is that uh, we want to form real long-term partnerships with our customers and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we are fortunate to have many 
very strong and loyal customers here in Indonesia, where we've been able to create the trust uh, that we can serve them, that uh, uh, you know, the way we are developing our people, the way we have a technology. I think what is critical is that you need to constantly show that you have really skilled employees, you have mm. employees who can service them throughout the life cycle of the building. You know, the way we are training our people in our training centers in Indonesia is really uh, showing the way here. Uh, so it's about understanding their business, being very transparent how we can service them and really meeting their and exceeding the expectations. That's how you create trust long-term relationships and that is very happy that we have a lot of them here in in indonesia okay so talking about the uh, challenges uh, of the industry in indonesia also the global market as we know that the global market condition is going slowing down because yeah. of the trade war between the united states and china as well and the other countries uh, facing a slowing down economy so how do you think the challenges well you know in our business and every business you have you have cycles now over the past uh, many years we've seen a very strong uh, economic cycle in United States uh, we've seen many European countries done quite well uh, and perhaps we're seeing a slight slowdown there now uh, but on the other hand we now see uh, many countries Southeast Asia India Indonesia where we have good growth opportunities and that is what our business has always been about that uh, it's not growing in all parts of the world mm -hmm. and you need to make sure you find the growth areas and also in the areas where it's not growing so much you really serve your customers well mm -hmm. uh, and then when I look at the coming years I can still see that the opportunity in the service business is growing so we have been very consistently growing our services business around the world uh, over the past many years. That's almost 50% of our business. And you know what? I see a lot of great growth opportunities in that over the coming years. So it's always, you see different economic environments. Mm -hmm. You need to adapt to them. Uh, but uh, the way we want to think about it, where do we still see the opportunities? And you know what? Even in uh, the opportunity where global economic growth is uh, slower mm -hmm. uh, we continue to see fantastic opportunities okay there's always an opportunity uh, when the company want to create more innovation and build a technology as well so uh, talking about the performance last year mm. uh, how about the Indonesia's performance you know, uh, I think always when you look at one country, one should look at it a little bit uh, longer term uh -huh. because it tells more than a quarter, just mm -hmm. a year. Uh, if I look at our performance in Indonesia over the past uh, over five years, it has been very strong. We've gone from having uh, a limited business here now mm -hmm. to have very significant operation. Uh, so we have successfully grown. And why have we grown? Well, I think uh, we have grown because of the technology we have because we have really invested a lot in training and developing our people here in Indonesia. Uh, and that has then created trust and very good relationships with our customers. So it's thanks to them, based <laughs> on what we've done, we have grown. And that, you know what, I see that going on uh, further. If I look at our business here in the region, so overall, Asia Pacific, including China, is almost 40% of our business. If I look at uh, Southeast Asia, India and Australia, that's a little bit over 1 billion uh, euros for of our business. Okay, so what is your target in the next five years in Indonesia and also global? You know, if I start with Indonesia, what is our target here? Our target uh, continues to be to grow faster in the market mm -hmm. and that we want to do by really serving our customers in a very good way. Mm -hmm. Providing services, solutions, products that really help them in their business. Uh, so, find opportunities, bring new innovation to them, mm -hmm. uh, continue to develop our people. When we do that, we can grow faster in the market. That is what we want to do. Uh, and we know that we're only going to grow if we create trust and long-term partnership with our customers. And you know what? That is the same uh, if I look at globally. Our objective continues to be to grow. We really want to show uh, the way in our industry, how we can service our customers in a much better way how we can provide much better outcomes for them mm -hmm. by deploying new technologies mm -hmm. and if I look at uh, how we're doing on that how we're progressing I'm actually very optimistic okay that was so interesting thank you very much Mr. Henry for joining with us and hope the best for you and also Kone thank you very much thank you
that was the end of our conversation. Thank you very much for watching and bye for now. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.